driving a stake through someone is murder. Um, <laughs> but it's and this seems to me rather basic. <laughs> oh, no, she's undead, so they <laughs> murdered them. Well, presumably yeah, a, a vampire has been issued with right. a death certificate. Yeah, but listen, you're killing them because, let's face it, they come back and drink blood. But don't you need to have evidence? I mean, you can't hang murderers admit, because if you, you if you went into my If you went into murder, my granny's tomb... You actually tomb. need witnesses, you <laughs> need a trial, you right. need a judge, you need a verdict. If you went into my granny's tomb well, and put a stake through the heart, the vampire's greatest strength upset. is the fact that nobody <laughs> believes in it. That's a quote from Bram Stoker. Now, it's also a quote that Bram Stoker took from something earlier. Let's go, yeah. Did he from what? From, from the law of the ancients. I mean, uh, they're the all quoting one another. Ancients. Now, that's a great term, isn't it? The <laughs> law of the ancients. Well, you can go back Doesn't to Kalmet, uh, then to Stoker, then to it? Summers. Um, they're all quoting one another. Right, the, the, you've come across two vampires face to face. Uh, or face to spider, <laughs> and you, you are. What, what did the, what did the, what, what did well, the one to, to answer um, well, no, uh, that, that gentleman's point? I would briefly, never yeah. commit a criminal act. No. I have never gone into a tomb or a, sa a sacred I place. So and it's close to the public after dark, I believe. Yes, but I did. I, I did not impale a vampire in Highgate Cemetery. Um, I, I impaled it when it relocated to unconsecrated ground. What did it look yeah. like this, when you, when you? Put the stake through the heart. What did the did vampire you read look? It's rights from a Miranda card. <laughs> <laughs> I want to find out. I want to actually find out what the physically, or um, whatever the word would be. What did this vampire actually look like? A several-day-old corpse with a bluish tinge under the skin. Um, but <laughs> when you're when you're, you feel like when that the tomorrow morning, ladies when and the, when the <laughs> fur is flying and you're in, in the uh, in is it the tall or, or yes how tall uh, uh, an un, un, uh, unusually tall. Well, and I'm could, usually could, large. Could you stand up, please? Because uh, you're. Was, is this the way. <laughs> have you seen this man before? Tall, but not that tall. <laughs> now, now, I must. Uh, I, I must just. <laughs> I must just introduce Robert Leake. Now, Robert, you are, um, for a living, you're a professional Dracula impersonator and par part time basketball player, I would imagine. <laughs> well. And um, you also impersonate Frankenstein. Now, I know that the whole thing, it does, it does, it does have a slightly, some people have said, it does have a slightly um, <laughs> sexy connotation. In the, now, now have, you had, have you been propositioned by women when you're in this garb and you've your fangs? In quite a lot of Dracula movies. Um, there is something quite alluring, quite seductive about the whole Dracula myth, isn't there? Wonderful, isn't yes. it? If you want to experience it, sit on my little lap and I give you a little bite. Would you? <laughs> of course. So I, I do it to my bank manager all the time. Yeah. He's so good to me. He believes in vampires well, too. Sucks blood. And in, incidentally, that with the garlic is rubbish. It doesn't put me what, up at all. What do you think? What do you think of Sean Manchester? I What's your impression? Sean is wonderful. Look at him. How he sits there. He really <laughs> believes he could kill me. You know, nothing could. Ask my husband. <laughs> oh, no. Now, Sean, we must just, just, just to explain, your, your garb tonight is, is not just a sort of modish affectation. You are indeed a direct descendant of Lord Byron, aren't you? Well, yes, for wh whatever relevance that has. Yeah, but there is a sort of... Uh, but th it does have a relevance in that you believe, do you not, that Lady Caroline Lamb, Lord Byron's lover, is a vampire? Oh, I, I don't know that she is. I've been keeping an eye on her for some time, mind you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she's semi-suspect. Put it that way. What about Robin Hood? Um, I don't know who it is that occupies that 13th century grave at Kirklees Hall Estate, um, which now bears a, a Victorian folly stone saying, here lies the Robert Earl of Huntingdon. Whether or not that is the case, the, there's been um, a problem for some 13 centuries, and whatever or whoever is in that, uh, again, unconsecrated mm. ground where, where the, um, in a, a wooded glade in West Riding of Yorkshire, um, has been causing problems for centuries. Uh, two centuries ago, the last owner, Sir Samuel, tried to dig up the, uh, the uh, tomb. Uh, uh, he was so terrified after, uh, according to uh, one account, digging a yard deep, yeah. that he ran off into the night with his friend. And uh, it's not been touched for another two centuries. Attempts to have it blessed by the local vicar have been thwarted by the landowner. Right, well, we've got some, some interesting people here who have that sort of gothic look, and thank you very much for coming. No, no not you, sir, with the beard. Uh, <laughs> uh, your look is some, some, something akin to that. But uh, uh, Now, you, you five, um, are any of you aspiring vampires? I'm not, no. No? <laughs> no not at all. 
Are people who dress like this inviting the evil forces of vampirism? <coughs> no, to these, come into th their these, lives? these are people who are wonderfully dressed, who are individualistic, who are doing their own thing. I suspect. He, he's been gone. On, he's been. He, you've been quoted in a magazine as saying people that dress like us are no better than people that dress up as Nazis. I'm misquoted every week in magazines. A, a, a wonderful article came out recently in a Sunday magazine. I'd never spoken to the person. Every quote so you attributed deny the fact to me. That we're the fact that you said we are no better than Nazis. Are they encouraging? Uh, yes, I deny that entirely. Uh, would they be quite tasty for a vampire? Um, well, not especially, because I've spoken <laughs> to a couple of them and they've told me that this is, this is a fashion, an individualistic mm. fashion, which they rather enjoy. I'm talking about people who are vampiroid. This right. is, these people are not vampires. What about the victims? How can you tell? You say that maybe one in 70 people are victims of vampires and you get letters from people who are really <coughs> genuinely afraid of this, that vampires are coming by the night and biting them. And, yeah. uh, and sucking their blood. So how can we tell who, who is a victim, a potential victim of a vampire? Well, obviously, there is the growing cult here what, in America. What are the signs? Well, the, the obvious signs is a, an enfeeblement, a, a growing weak, a becoming very anemic, mm. and um, a, a taste for um, a, a fresh blood. I mean, the, the, the young girl who's next Staying out late at night, perhaps. Yeah. Earlier on, developed a taste for uh, raw meat. I'm not sure if Keith's aware, but uh, the, his girlfriend, uh, towards the end, developed a taste for uh, raw lumps of meat. And, but uh, all the signs and symptoms, uh, he thought she was possessed at the beginning of her um, uh, haunting. What yeah. happened to Keith's girlfriend? Perhaps this is an interesting issue. Well, the antidotes which everyone scoffs at, uh, in, including our dear Countess Dracula, and says wouldn't harm, uh, they worked. Not because they themselves are, have any power. I, I'm not sure about garlic because there might be a chemical aspect mm. to garlic. They don't like. They don't obviously don't like the smell of it. The the faith, the concentrated focus of belief behind the symbology and the iconography. <laughs> did she? Did she in fact? The die? triumph of good over evil. She didn't die. No, it was a happy ending. She didn't die, did she? Why is she no. not here to speak for herself? Well, because it all happened over 20 years ago, and. Keith is here because we were able to trace him, though until very recently I hadn't seen Keith for 17 years. Where Elizabeth is, I don't know. If you're out there, Elizabeth, oh, please come forward. You see, the tragedy is a lot of people openly now appreciate that the occult and demonic realm is real, and then you get something like this that takes it right back into the picture book situation, and he's farcical. This man's sincere in his beliefs, though. He Susan might be sincere in his beliefs, but he's farcical. Susan Blackmore, you're a psychologist. Is, 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 is he, you know, is, has he got bats in the belfry? I wouldn't say that, no. <laughs> <coughs> well, he's giving us a lot of fun tonight. But I disagree with both of you there by trying to say that all these supernatural things are real. They may or may not be. I strongly suspect they aren't, and that you might as much lead us astray. But what I think is so sad about this is that something which can be frightening in a rather pleasant way, that people can enjoy the fear of the idea of a vampire and going in a graveyard, I mean, abolishes all the petty fears you have about whether you left the gas on or whether you were rude to your neighbour mm. and get frightened about something really meaty. OK, but when someone comes along like this, I think we're doing the healthiest possible thing, actually, which is we're all just having a laugh. Some hands are going up. Yes, you in a sort of peach jumper. Right. What I want to know is, what, if there's one in seven people who've been 70. bitten by... What's one in 70? Yeah. Why haven't we heard more from them? Well, I'm not sure that there is one in 70. It's always possible that there is uh, somebody in a smaller or a larger or an even larger group uh, who might have been um, uh, contaminated. But one in seven or one in 70 isn't a... I, I've never done a census. There's somebody in America that's done is one. Is it always the jugular vein that they go for? Well, no, they can go for any part, but obviously the jugular off offers the most uh, like, succulent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, you but, but, so if you use the sign of the Christian symbol, why is it the Bible doesn't mention vampires? Why is it the fact that the Bible doesn't mention the Trinity? Do you believe in the Trinity, don't you? All right, theological the Bible doesn't mention Yeah, please, a theological and biblical discussion for another time. Mr. Nichols from Nuneaton is and he says that he's been uh, a blood donor for years. Can he give the vampire hunter the address of his income tax inspector? <laughs> and Brian Baker from Wednesbury asks, does the vampire have anything to do with Margaret Thatcher as a poll tax? As the poll tax is blood curdling. Well, it's a little bit of politics there. Uh, some ha more hands going up. Yes, with the beard, yeah. Um, Montague Summers, you mentioned earlier, um, in The Vampire is Kith and Ken, and The yes. Vampire in England, Summers postulates that if uh, Christians can believe that God can give powers to someone to make them a saint, then Satan can give powers to someone to make them a, a vampire, to give them powers <laughs> Absolutely. that exist uh, beyond the grave. Yeah. So... I would accept that. I think so. Now, the other, the other <laughs> thing is, is that if, if... Briefly, please, briefly. Yes. So, 
Hello, the gentleman beside you, you've got your hand up. Just, yeah. just one di small point, coming, yeah. I think if more of us dressed like these people, we could eliminate the wolf whistles which we were talking about earlier. <laughs> <laughs> and a, yeah, and about with the fair hair, yeah. Well, you saying that, you know, these vampires are killing people. Well, surely, if he's killing them, they'll want to get rid of him first, so why do you have trouble from him? Do you feel threatened by vampires trying to get you, get you back? No, I'm rather in the position of the engineer that goes up the pylon and isn't worried about the million volt cable, mm. somebody else who's, who's not familiar with that cable will probably get electrocuted very quickly. So, and also the set of symbols I work with and the faith behind those set of symbols uh, give me a shield which I have 100% uh, confidence in. Well, um, good luck with your vigils, good luck with your vampire hunting. Thank you very much for coming in. I hope you enjoy that at home. Uh, it was a stimulating debate and uh, it's up to you to decide whether it's fact or whether it's fiction. Sleep very soundly tonight. That's it for this Friday. From all of us at Central Weekend, have a vampire-free night